Good morning, everybody. We just had this semi of wheat straw show up to the farm. This truck belongs to Dennis. You guys maybe re recognize that name from some of the silaging videos this summer. He was in the bagging video and maybe some other ones. And uh, he brought this load of straw out that we bought. It's just wheat straw. We also have a ton from our own fields are covered in snow right there. We're just gonna unload it right here. We had about just under 600 wheat straw bales that we made ourselves and then we ran out of our own wheat straw. So we had to buy roughly just over a hundred more and he trucked them out. So I'm gonna get them unloaded. We're just gonna use the New Holland wheel loader. Let's get at it. the long reach arms see right there long reach basically that means these arms are maybe a foot a foot and a half longer than what it would be on a regular wheel loader and this really is helping me reach over to the other side grabbing the bales from just this side which makes it nice and convenient put all the bales right there that way I don't have to grab them from this side and drive around and put them there go back to this side just saves a lot of time which is pretty awesome check it out that's the first load unloaded total of 34 bales on that trailer which is pretty that's quite a few another thing I noticed about his truck here he's got some good tires on which is really good because you can see even though we plowed it here there's still a bit of snow you don't want some bald tires on your truck trying to pull a trailer like that got that first load unloaded off of the truck there next thing I'm doing this afternoon is cleaning the silage pit out there's quite a bit of snow build up in here. It's just a couple inches and it's packed down pretty hard. The reason I really want to get this cleaned out today is because we're going to be putting pea pellets in here. We basically got a different feed again, some new starch pellets from peas. And it's because barley grain was getting super expensive to feed just because the barley per bushel rate was just going up and up. And we figured, you know what, we'll just try something else. Our feed guy said, hey, you can replace your barley grain with these starch pellets and they're a little bit cheaper so you can save some money like that. So we started feeding them. We have those other grain bins with the augers underneath that you can just drive the feed wagon underneath, fill them up right away, but we don't have any extra. So since we are feeding another different type of grain, we need another place to feed it out of. So we've literally just been dumping it on the ground in our silage pit and feeding it from there. It's always frozen, so it's never getting moist or soggy or anything like that. So doesn't really matter in the winter time to just put it outside on the ground like that in the silage pit but I do want to at least clean all the snow out of here before we dump a bunch more pea pallets there. of 
pea pellets was right there and we were feeding from the opposite side of the pit face in the bunk here. Now I'm gonna dump the pea pellets over here and then we can feed from this other side of the pit face. And another chunk of bales just showed up so we're gonna go and bring the loader over to Dennis and then he can unload it. And then right away after I will start to haul some pea pellets into the silage pit there. Just a quick change of plans here. I was gonna grab one of our silage trucks and fill the whole thing full but it's frozen up a little bit. So there's some airlines in that truck, the International, and they probably got a little bit of moisture in there with this cold weather, they froze up. So I can't move that truck right now because the transmission can't put itself into drive mode. It's a stupid problem, it really sucks. We're also blocking the other truck in the shed with that truck that can't move right now. So we're gonna have to bring a heater and kind of thaw that thing out and then park it inside. So for the time being, we need to get those pea pellets out to that silage pit so we can feed them tomorrow morning because we're completely out. So I figured, you know what, we'll just grab the payloader, put a couple buckets in the pit there, and that'll get us by for at least a couple days. We got ourselves a decently sized pile here. I don't wanna put too much here with the loader. I'm constantly spilling with that bucket, overfilling it. It's kind of tough nailing it with that auger in the bucket. Hopefully this pile is gonna hold us over until we can get that truck thawed out. It sounds so silly thawing out a truck and it being frozen, but it's just a bit of moisture in some airlines, so it's unfortunate. What these pea pallets are, they're kind of just a hard pressed. They're uh, basically high in starch. And this is actually, I believe, human food grade. So it's pretty good stuff. And yeah, we're kind of just replacing a bit of barley in our TMR for the milk cows with this stuff. It's cheaper, so um, yeah, made sense for us. I think last February I made a video called Healthy Hooves and that kind of talks about us running a foot bath in our farm. The cows would walk through it when they were finished milking and it was just, I believe, around 200 liters of water and then we added acidified copper sulfate to that. Basically what this foot bath did is it prevented hairy hillwort from occurring in our milk herd or also known as strawberry foot. And there's a ton of names for it. It's basically this nasty little wart that cows can get. It's basically this nasty little wart that cows can get on the back of their hoof and it puts them in quite a bit of pain and that's why we want to prevent it. And we can actually prevent it by running one of these foot baths. So. That's why we have one and I made a whole video explaining that. But today we're gonna to be switching around the solution we put in that foot bath. So before we were putting those big bags of blue acidified copper sulfate, which I was a pretty big fan of because it kind of looked like some turquoise water that they were stepping through, which always looked nice. Um, but we're gonna be switching to what's in this barrel here. Um, I guess it's called Guardian Smart Step or something. It's pretty similar to the acidified copper sulfate that we were putting in with bags but this is a liquid and we have a little pump right beside our foot bath that pumps it full of liquid and that's why we want to switch to a liquid it's just a little bit more convenient for us instead of carrying a bag we can put this tote there once every couple months and we don't have to carry anything there anymore we don't have to deal with any bags it's just going to be a lot cleaner and a lot more streamlined so we're going to lug this barrel over there to the foot bath right by the sort gate there uh, this thing is 205 liters so it's gonna weigh a lot more than I weigh. Should be fun to move. We're gonna grab one of those two wheeled trolley things. That'll really help out. All right, here in the calf run, this is what we're looking for. Well, that wasn't the plan. 
<laughs> oh man, I'm happy that didn't break. I think that was a hard fall. No. No? I'll just tell my dad he doesn't have to watch this episode and watch that happen. There's our foot bath, and now we have the big tote here. Gotta hook it up, got the tool to open it up, and then we gotta drop this dipstick or this line in there. This is actually what sucks it up out of there. Got the pump, and then it pumps that stuff directly to the foot bath. And we can also run water, open and close the door, all from here, so. Once we get it all hooked up, I'm gonna time how long it takes to pump out 15 liters, because that's how many liters we want to put in this foot bath per foot bath, I guess, with the water in there. And if I time it, then we'll know how long we need to run this pump for, so every time we refill it, we'll pull out our timer on our smartphones, and we'll time it, make sure that it's a consistent foot bath every single time. So we measured 15 liters, took a little over nine minutes to fill up. Hey, 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 did you, you wait. No, 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 we need better. What a rude lady. So we got that foot bath filled up, nine minutes, 40 seconds. And this thing is going to be out after 14 foot baths, I think. So we'll be able to run 14 foot baths with this one barrel. Um, I think we're gonna do a few less foot baths. Hopefully this stuff works better. We're gonna have to keep an eye on the cows and see what their hair and heel wart looks like going forward. But um, yeah, it should be interesting to see. Hopefully this stuff works good. It pretty much has to work better, I think, because waiting nine minutes and 40 seconds to fill this foot bath now, I mean, we don't have to deal with any bags, but that's gonna add some time to your day. So hopefully it works better. I just read on a piece of paper, the instructions for this tote and how to mix the foot bath, that the optimum pH level is 4.5. And I actually have some pH strips here, little test strips. You might see these things in your high school science classroom, I did, and you just play around with these, test the pH and stuff. But I'm gonna test the pH and see what it's like in here and see if we kind of hit the mark that they're looking for. Dump her on in the water. So that looks pretty good. So this kind of comes and sits right around where we want it, right around that four to five range, which is perfect. Well guys, I'm in the shop right now because uh, some cows again are trying to break their water bowl. I just need a cotter pin. One of these will do. Nope. One of these will do. Uh, probably the smallest one. Yeah, right here at this water bowl. So there's basically a cover and this pin goes through the cover to make sure this stays on. This cover just protects that float. Make sure the cows don't mess with it. So uh, somehow one of the ladies in this group decided to uh, 
try and break this water bowl for everybody. There we go. So now no cows are gonna bugger that float in there. If you guys have made it this far in the video, comment down below, new foot bath. Uh, the reason why I'm constantly trying to get you guys to comment is because it really helps the YouTube channel out. But um, yeah, thanks for watching today's video, guys, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. You're the same girl? Hey? Okay.